That's it. Get all the coughing out now. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hit record. That's we got that one at least. Um, <laughs> tell me. Uh, okay, so obviously, you know the the circumstances in which uh, the Quills ninth album, ninth yes, right. ninth album Earth Rise is arriving. Uh, different circumstances than any record you've put out before uh what when were these songs written uh what was the was the process different at all when was when was it done i guess is the is the first question mm -hmm. well <clears throat> um, we started uh, the songwriting uh, uh, a few years back actually uh, i mean we write songs pretty much all the time but once the most of the touring was done for the last album, uh, I guess, in in the summer of the <clears throat> 19, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, we really started to focus on, on the songwriting process. And uh, I think we had all pretty much all the music done uh, by November uh, okay. 2019. Uh, <clears throat> and then we uh, got on tour with uh, Nebula for a couple of weeks and then right after that we, we hit the studio to record the songs uh, uh, so the music was done before the pandemic uh, and most of the lyrics as well and we uh, managed to make most parts of the of the recording sessions before the COVID uh, pandemic hit us so uh, like two thirds of the of everything of the album was recorded and finished, and then we had to kind of stop everything, you know. Uh, and it took uh, a very very long time to find <coughs> to find the time and you know make everything work and sure. get everything done, and, uh, and then the mixing process and the uh, mastering and the uh, cover cover artwork and everything it it took for ages so <laughs> so uh, yeah in in november 20 we had everything finished and delivered to the to record label so yeah it was a long process wow so so basically a year finishing kind of that last that last third yeah <sighs> pretty much yeah uh, it's so frustrating. I was going to say that's that sounds incredibly <laughs> frustrating. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm. But at, you know, no one knew what was going to happen with with the, all the lockdowns and everything, and we thought, okay, this, it's it is what it is. We we can't change anything. We just work in the pace that we can manage to do, and then we re release it when everything is in is finished, and we. We didn't push or rush uh, because we didn't have a deadline. The record label just said, "Yeah, make it uh, as quick you, as you can, and then we will release it uh, when we get the album, and we take it from there." You know, so it, it was uh, yeah. ourselves. Uh, we we made what we could do. It's <laughs> good. Um, yeah. It's fortunate you guys weren't against a deadline. That was actually something I was wondering about is if there was, you know, I, I know, you know, it's, it's album nine. You guys are not inexperienced at, at putting out records and doing kind of album cycles and stuff. I was wondering if there were like tour plans or stuff that had to be shoved back after that. I mean, after that Nebula run. Oh, so Yeah. Yeah. There were tour plans that was uh, shot, but not because of the uh, record, just because of everything stopped. Sure. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. That's everybody's everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what were, I guess, Magnus's vocals were, were probably the last thing to be done. Was that what was, was finishing during, during lockdown? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the mix and the mix and the master and all that. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did how did that 
aside from being frustrating, that that sort of shift in the process affect how you think of the album now? Well, I mean, uh, because it took that long time. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> most of the time when you release an album, you you have to have, as you said before, we have to plan it with a tour and everything like that. So it, you know, it clicks in. Uh, but now we just, we get the album ready and then we release it and we, we can't see a tear when a f finished album and wait for the lockdowns to to stop, you know. We just release it and then we go forward and start writing songs for another album because mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to do, I mean, we are creative persons. We have to do something just so uh, actually when we just had the, the cover artwork, uh, we only waited for the cover artwork and uh, all the music was finished and so on. Then we, we started to rehearse and write new songs uh, just to, uh, you know. Yeah, to do something. To do something and yeah. just because who knows <laughs> how long everything will last and, uh, you know, it's better to just keep going and, and we have maybe a half of the next album written already. So, so you have to maintain the create creative process. Otherwise you go nuts. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, yes, I understand that. Um, well then tell me, I guess I, I want to talk, I want to talk about Earthrise, but tell yeah, me, course. tell yeah. me about sort of moving forward too, right? Because you, that's different for you too, though, right? You you know, you have to be used to at this point living with a record for a while before you sort of drop yeah. it and go out. Earthrise, Earthrise has only been out for a couple of weeks at this point, and yet you're yeah. you're moving forward already. That's I mean, that has to feel incredibly strange, especially as you waited a year to finish to finish yeah, this yeah. album. Yeah, it's really really strange, and you know we <clears throat> we haven't have a had a release party or, you know, anything yeah, like that. anything. Yeah. You know, when we, the date of the release, we were sitting like we, we are, you and me and now we <laughs> looking at each other in the, in the computers. All right. Here's cheers to the new album boys. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's very, very strange. Yeah. I yeah. Know. But uh, I mean, what can you do? I, I think it's a great album. I think maybe it's the, it's the best we've done actually. It's, uh, I'm really, really pleased with, it, with how it uh, came out. And uh, it seems like a lot of people uh, appreciate it as well. And it, it, that makes, makes you happy every time someone, you know, tells yeah. you, yeah, it's an album. Absolutely. So, it's nice, nice to hang your hat on that. Absolutely. And in sort of the absence of hearing it in person. Um, well, let's talk about, let's talk about the record then. Uh, you know, I, there's so much going on. Uh, I, you know, there are, there's always the sort of sonic references. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hear, I hear Kiss in Hallucinate. I hear, I hear Dio era Sabbath in, in Evil Omen and The Zone and, and even a little bit in Dwarf Planet, maybe, you know, like, yeah. uh, a little bit of Caius here and there. There's, there's such this blend of, of classic ideas and and mm -hmm. sort of your own stamp on it um my question about that is is what for you at this point nine nine records in what defines the quill sound for you <coughs> well i think it, it's it's such a big uh, mix of of many many uh, influences, uh, but uh, I think we try to be uh, very dynamic in, in the song in the songwriting and the, and the, if you look at the album uh, as a whole, uh, uh, there's mellow parts there's pretty fast stuff and there's slow, heavy stuff. Uh, but 
we try not to go over to you know the the metal metal stuff you know if you say like uh, Judas Priest or uh, uh, or if you say uh, you know metal uh, music I think we're more the classic hard rock really really heavy but not not in a metal way you know there's not uh, you know not aggressive aggressive metallic yeah. guitars it's more smooth long chords and uh, you know uh, it's hard to describe but uh, there's there's a, a limit when oh this this is too much uh, uh, heavy metal uh, and then then it's not quill anymore hmm. yeah it's it's those basic references how i think mostly how how the musicians played in in the 70s i think the way drummers played you know ian pace brown Dine, brian downey uh, john bonham and and how bass players interact with the guitar players uh, not copying the riff we if i play a riff then roger uh, do something with the riff to, mm -hmm. uh, to make it bigger and uh, in most metal uh, music that, that i that i see uh, you have a heavy guitar riff very strict and uh, precise and then the bass player does the exact same thing just to make it more uh, bottom uh, you know but we don't work that way yet we have a maybe it's a bass line or it's a guitar line and then the me or roger uh, you know makes a little twist to that so and then uh, Jolle is playing very freely on it, on the drums uh, it's not steady rhythm all the time we try to be you know uh, more free free form uh, in the way we play i think mm -hmm. to make it more lively and and we we jam a lot uh, on the songs and you know there, there there's some uh, basic structures but uh, we are we are <clears throat> try to be more free in the way we play and i think that's how the guys played in, in those old classic bands as well uh, so I think how we see the way uh, we play the, play the songs is yeah uh, yeah I'm getting deep now. <laughs> Please but by I, all means. No, I I think that's interesting though because I you know I usually think of the Quill songs as you know what I need to pause this for just one second. Hang on just a second. Anyway. Uh, and, and for anyone who watches this video, uh, what just happened was I stopped the recording to go take a pie out of the oven because that's the kind of professional I am. Just anyone, anyone at home watching this video, that's what happened in that, in that short break. So anyway, Christian, thank you. Um, you were talking about the quill sort of, uh, jamming, uh, and, and having that, that musical conversation deriving from 70s heavy rock, classic heavy rock. Uh, it's interesting. What's interesting about that to me is because I tend to think of the Quill songs as being st structured, very structured by, by, the, by the time, you know, by the time the record's done. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of finding that, that, that structure within those jams and how the songs kind of emerge from that. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> we we always write songs uh, in the rehearsal room. Well, one of the one was comes up with an idea for a riff for a, you know one or two parts of a song that fits together, and then we try to jam them. See if I play like this, how, how would you play? And can we find a melody for the vocals on this part? What does this sound like? Is this a chorus? Is this a verse or what is this? And then we, you know, try to develop uh, 
different ways of playing each part. Uh, if we do the riff like this, how heavy should the drums be? What kind of bass line should we do here? Uh, and if we find a melody for the vocals, uh, how for how many, uh, how long should we go on with this part before we go, before we go to the next? And we we jam and extend and shorten and, and twist and turn on on for every part of the song until we find a, a way to do it so it fits with the next part of the song. And then we go on with, you know, it's very, very uh, long process to just find the essence of every part. How should we play this part to make it sound the most interesting? And uh, can we do the same part in different ways? You know, here's a riff. All right, we can do it. If we do it like this, it's pretty cool, and it's very cool if we do it like this. Yeah, maybe we do it like this in the first of the song, and maybe in the end we can go back to that riff, but we do it in an, another way, mm -hmm. a more mellow or a double tempo or whatever. And we try to, you know, ma make the most of uh, all the parts and, and jam a lot while doing that. And, you know, it's, it's very fun and creative, and I think... Well, and but once we have the form from from the song, then we try to stick to that as much as possible. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way it usually goes. There is, I mean, there is such a, a a firm sense of structure, you know, and 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 songwriting. Um, but I that make but it makes a lot of sense in kind of the thinking of the Quill's overall sound, right? You guys have never you you've been around at this point long enough to sort of see 70s retro rock happen as a as a thing right like in, in yeah. sweden geez you know um still there are blues rock bands coming out of sweden uh yeah. tw you know 20 years after the retro thing it's, it's astonishing but um you know having done that your your sound is and and born from fire earthrise going back has never really been has never really been retro and thinking of thinking of earthrise you know you can hear sort of the the solos pop in and out you can hear the fullness of of a modern of a modern recording process of a modern sound uh how important is it to you to have that clearness that fullness of sound while at the same time being able to preserve the, as you say, the sort of more the natural conversation between kind of the the guitar and the bass and the drums. And... Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> of course, <coughs> we, we want a powerful, powerful modern sound, but uh, it's it's a very fine line. I think the way we play, we play in such a uh, '70s way, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and just by the way we play and the the sound that we want from from the drums and bass and guitars uh, the natural sound from our instruments is that makes it very very 70s but then we uh, the recording process we try to add the modern uh, engineering mm -hmm. you know what 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 the one can do these days with, with the recording process to make it more full more more uh, even more heavy, uh, but uh, we try not to to add too many layers of you know guitars or uh, you have to have the dynamic and and the air in the in the while listening to it. So you you I don't want a wall of guitars you know hitting me like that for forty minutes. You you can't do that. You, we have to. It had to be dyna dynamics, the, the lows and the everything, and uh, it's that's. Uh, I think it's that's that, that's the main thing that we achieve, try to achieve every time, make it at, as heavy as possible, but still keeping the the dynamic and the the make the the sound breathe you know 
how does that relate to not that it's happened for a while, but how does that relate to playing live that attitude? Yeah, I think it, it helps us playing when, when playing live because mostly it's, it's just uh, one kind of guitar, you know, I don't do that much of, you know, different kind of guitars. Right. You can always, there are some additional guitars here and there, but they're not the, the thing that makes the song right. rock. The basic guitar structure is, is the thing that I do live. And if you take away all those uh, small things that comes in here and there, it, it still works. And, it, uh, and it's, uh, yeah, I think we try to, to make it a, a live feeling in, in the studio. Uh, as for drums and bass, it's, that's not ever a problem because there are always only one drum track and one bass track for, on every recording. But when it comes to guitars, you know, it's so easy to, uh, all of a sudden you have seven guitar tracks on one song, you know. <laughs> what the fuck, how am I going to do this? Right, right, right. <laughs> So, uh, but we try to not uh, get there. <laughs> it's easy, easy to embellish, perhaps. Yeah, yes. I mean, oh, it's so heavy. That's I don't know, I don't know the guitar, and yeah, that's find some melodies, and you know, and all of a sudden, there's a totally different thing. Right. But uh, yeah, but some in, in some songs we have a lot of guitars, and there's a lot of stuff happening, but. If if there's uh, if you, uh, I don't know the English word for it, but uh, if you have an idea for a, you know an additional guitar and it, that really makes the song better, then we add it. But we don't add stuff just because we need a lot of guitars. You, you have to make a, you have to have a purpose with 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 everything that goes on the take. Right. I mean, yeah, obviously. And and modern recording makes that much, much easier to do. Right. So you yeah, can, you but... can't you could try it out and then pull it if it doesn't work. Um and we try to play the whole songs you know through uh with every instrument. I mean in the <clears throat> nowadays if you got a let's say if you have a riff for the song and in the song, you play that 80 times. Mo most uh, recording sessions, you know, yeah, let's play the riff. Let's play it really good for four times. And then you just copy paste for the rest of the song. We'd never do that. It's always uh, like we did, uh, you know, in the old days. Mm -hmm. If the bass just does a little, little, little thing in the second verse, then I had to adjust to that right. you know so it, it comes alive all the time well, i think yeah i mean i think for what you guys are playing you definitely want that right i mean you yep. that's that's that that's that interaction between the bass and guitar yeah. you're talking about um tell me about writing 21st century sky the the boogie in that just 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 hits hits that sweet spot right that sabbath shuffle yeah. tell, tell me about writing that song <clears throat> well, yeah, I think I just was just fiddling around with some kind of, you know, a boogie groove, mm. and just to have that that snare hit in, in the wrong, <laughs> not on the on on the two, you yeah. know, and I, I think it's it's a very cool rhythm, and <laughs> and uh, and Jolly hits. Uh, everything just just the way it should be to make it to make it swing uh, but it, that that's a, that was a very hard song to record actually because you have to be so precise to make mm -hmm. all those nuances hit uh, uh, exactly but and if you analyze the the playing on that song you can find a lot of lot of places where it's not 100% <laughs> Uh, but you know, uh, 
if we would edit that song to make it 100 percent you know it would just sound like shit yeah no <laughs> it has to be a lie you know you're absolutely right yes uh, yeah no that's that's the character of the song yeah that, yeah. yeah totally um in dwarf planet magnus uh sings a, a bunch of times the line asking i believe who is the commander of my brain who's the commander of magnus's brain <laughs> i don't think uh, who you, he really knows <laughs> that's why he's asking okay just curious just curious yeah uh how do you feel about the quill as sort of a life's work for you it's you know 30 years of 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 the band what yeah. do you have any reflections on that as you kind of look back or look forward yeah i mean for every year that we can keep this band going you know it's it's it amazes me uh, and, and now when we release an, a new album and you have to uh, think about those things because those questions comes up and, and you have to think about it you know i mean it's uh, we've done this for pretty much our whole grown-up lives you know yeah it's been part of, <clears throat> of my life and uh, everyone in the band for <coughs> you know since we were 20 or something and uh, i mean when we recorded our first album uh, magnus just has had become father for the first time and now he's a grandfather <laughs> you know <laughs> It's yeah, it's uh, ooh, it's uh, it's amazing when you think about it, you know. And uh, when uh, when we did the first album, uh, I didn't have any kids, and uh, now my oldest son is twenty five. You know, but but we still play those songs live, and it doesn't feel like that long ago we wrote them. But I mean, it's a whole lifetime for our kids. <laughs> They weren't there when we when we started this band, and now they are, we have grown up kids. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> Does thinking about it like that change your relationship to the band, and how has your and how has your relationship with the band grown over time? Thinking about it as kind of relating to the lives of your children, right? Does you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think we are more and more humble for every year. I mean, in the beginning we were like, yeah, let's, let's go for this 100%. We are going to get bigger and bigger and just try the best we can to, to make this band work. Uh, but then, you know, the kids and wives and houses and everything goes into it. And, and if you, if you can't make a living out of, of making music, you you have to have day jobs and you have to have a schedule when to rehearse and, okay, I can't rehearse today because, you know, I have to get the kids from, uh, you know, there's so much going on in those years when you have small kids. So, my, my son's school bus is due in 20 minutes. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and you can't, if you have a guitar and a small amp in your at your uh, at home, as I always have, some years there's no there's no way I can sit down and try to write songs because there's always something going on. Just I I knew you know when I okay I'll, I'll try to sit down and play guitars and I know within one minute one kid will come in here and daddy daddy. <laughs> Uh, All right. Okay, I play a guitar another day then. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that goes on for <laughs> many years actually. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's frustrating and and, and uh, but you know, now everyone is over that. We have grown up kids, and now we have it's a totally different different thing now. Right. Now you can go back and write half a record 
uh, yeah. <laughs> during the during the pandemic. And hey, you're, yeah. you're moving forward. That's yeah. I but guess I, that's I a trade off. We appreciate uh, appreciate each other in a band uh, much more nowadays. It's more a really rela relaxed situation. I think everyone has their we know each other that well. Everyone, we know what makes Magnus uh, angry or what makes him disappoint. You know, and <clears throat> if we, if you want Jolle uh, really, really get going in something, you know exactly how to do, you know, uh, because we know each other and we don't go to those areas where we know people will be pissed off, you know, it's not worth it. Uh, no, but uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a much smoother machine these days. It's fortunate. Yeah. Uh, um, otherwise, a band probably wouldn't last that long. Uh, yeah, I think so. What uh, do you have any idea when you'll look to be back in the studio? Like time? What's the timing on more writing, or is it just as it comes? Yeah, we'll see. We, now we are having plans for for touring, but when? maybe there will there will be maybe some shows in in later this year. But there will be a bigger tour in the beginning of twenty two. So uh, I think we will have time to uh, write the album and maybe start the recording process before this year is over. So uh, I hope. Uh, that will be the case. And maybe next album will be out in 22. That that should shouldn't be impossible. It's, it's good and and nice to. Uh, it must be nice to have the prospect of tour dates back. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean now people are getting their vaccines and uh, and after the summer I think things will start to open up, but. Uh, those who have, uh, you know, pushed their tours forward and forward. Uh, so I guess the autumn of 21 is pretty much full, fully booked already. So yeah, yeah, that seems it seems that's what I'm seeing is, is yeah. there's like this glut that and then, you know, everything that was pushed back because of the pandemic is now part of the glut and then everything else is still pushing. Back. Yeah, what a mess. What a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. But, um, <clears throat> for the festivals, you know, all festivals were cancelled in 2020 and pretty much every artist was uh, yeah let's like, let's book you for 21 instead all right so every festival for 21 was fully booked and now it's the same yeah <laughs> <It's more. laughs> exactly. i guess there are no spots for the festivals in 22 <laughs> <laughs> mm. it's it's crazy but uh, i know that's yeah. the way it is It'll even out. Uh, by the time you guys are putting out your twelfth record, don't worry about it. It'll be yeah. it'll be fine. It'll all work out. Uh, Christian, thank you so much for for taking the time. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording, but thank you and congratulations on the record and and everything. So hang on just a second. Thank you.